Start. Hey, it's Lemon. Welcome to the Backlogs. Today on Ye of, Ye of Little Faith, Faith, we're going to be discussing a run that I've had in the back of my mind for a good few months now, but never quite had the guts to attempt. That's right, today we're going to be talking about a torch-only run in Dark Souls 1. So before we dive headfirst into numbers and strategies and all that jazz, there's two problems I want to address about this run. First off, there's the obvious connotation that if I ever do this run, it'll be expected of me to do it in the next two games. Everybody loves a sequel, except when they don't. But that doesn't really apply to the run itself, that's just a personal issue of mine. No, the real problem with the Dark Souls 1 torch only run is, um, there isn't really a torch in Dark Souls 1. So, but don't you worry, my loving, loyal, completely healthy, and definitely not sadistic community solved that one for me. Behold, the closest thing we have to a torch, the Skull Lantern. Forgot about that one, didn't you? Yep, so did I. If you're like me and 99% of players, you only used it when you finally found one in the Tomb of Giants, used it until you got to Nito's Tomb, then immediately chucked it into your bottomless box and forgot about it for the rest of the game. What about the other 1%? Well, they found it in the catacombs when a necromancer dropped it, then proceeded to do the exact same thing. So, what is this thing? Well, it's a lantern, and it's shaped like a skull. Exactly what it says on the tin. But what does it do? Well, it, uh, lights stuff up, so that's working as advertised. Oh, and it can technically block things, which is good, considering this thing generally goes in your left hand in place of your shield. Though its defenses leave a bit to be desired. Anything else? Um, I mean, yeah, I guess so. This, uh, this doing anything for you? Like the rest of the shields in Dark Souls, you can in fact use it as a weapon if you're desperate or mad enough. And, like the other shields in Dark Souls, this is a terrible, terrible idea. But it does have one thing going for it that the other shields don't. It does elemental damage. Fire damage, to be exact. A whole whopping 75 of it, with an enormous 30 strike damage on top of that. For those of you wondering if that's good, no. No, it's not. For comparison, the broken straight sword, literally a broken weapon, does 40 damage. And yeah, you get 75 damage to help out with that, but that's still not much. So alright, bad times as far as base damage goes, but what if we upgrade it? Oh. Oh no. Oh no! Okay, the damage is bad, and it doesn't get better with upgrades. Which means we're looking at low damage the entire run. I'm sure you're starting to see why I didn't want to do this run. But, because this is Yolf, we have to at the very least prove it can be done. And I think that it can. Technically. As with all runs, the amount of exploits and modding you do is up to you. Personally, because this run is already hell, I'd probably just mod in the Skull Lantern in place of your broken sword and call it a day. But if you wanted to keep it mod and glitch free, you could always punch the Asylum Demon to death, then make your way down to the catacombs and punch the Necromancers down there to re-death too. Because they have a 2% chance of dropping one for you. Hooray! But before the panic truly sets in, if you kill every single Necromancer, there's a pretty good chance you'll get it to drop. I guess the numbers behind the scenes basically add 10% to the drop rate with every Necromancer you kill. If you kill one Necromancer, you now have 12% chance. Two Necromancers, 22% chance. And so on and so forth up to a maximum of 62%. So yeah, you got that going for you. Just mod it in. Please, for the love of God, just mod it in. Now then, you've got your lantern. Where do we go from here? Well, that's kind of up to you. You could begin your very slow murder spree and begin making your way through the game, or you could find a few items to make your journey slightly less painful. We have a few classic staples, like the red tearstone ring, which will give you an additional 50% damage when your health is below 20%. And there's always the fap ring, which is actually too good to pass up and makes its way into 95% of the builds everyone makes anyway, myself included. But what else can we do? Well, there's Power Within, which for the low, low cost of 1% of your health every second, gives you an additional 40% damage, so that's good. And there's also a few lesser used rings that should make parts of this run easier, like the Fog Ring and the Slumbering Dragon Crest Ring. Because let's be honest, the Lantern is so bad that the only things you'll want to consider fighting are the bosses. The easier it is to run past everything else, the better. Alternatively, if you want to invest a few points into Intelligence, you could just get Invisibility and Hush and save the ring slots. Oh, and I guess you could get the Grass Crest Shield instead of the Chloranthi Ring to save on that as well. So yeah, that's about as good as it's going to get. Which means we can now plan the route. Here we go! 
Start the game as the knight if you want vitality at the start, or the sorcerer if you want intelligence. Take the master key as your gift, make your way out of the asylum, head down to the Valley of Drakes and get the red tearstone ring, then push past Havel and get the grass crest shield. And while you're in the undead parish, let out our boy Lawtrek from his cell. Then introduce him to gravity, because Vaprain, and because fuck Lawtrek. After that, you just need to beat a single boss, it's just the Capra demon, you'll be fine. Also, you can free Laurentius. Then go backwards through Blighttown and get power within. And with that, your build, as far as damage and major stats are concerned, is complete. And now the nightmare can truly begin. Now, some of you are probably asking, Lemon, you forgot about stats and scaling. Doesn't that help? Oh, sure, absolutely. The Skull Lantern scales with strength. And if the good people of the internet are to be believed, maxing out strength will get you a whopping three extra damage. That's right, three. And not fire damage, physical. So if you put points into anything other than vitality and stamina, so help me God, I will. And that's about it. You've got physical damage to help you get through the bosses that are immune to fire, and I'm pretty sure every boss is capable of being hit with a melee weapon, so you're basically set. Can it be done? Yes. Should it be done? No, absolutely not. I mean, can you imagine the Hydra? Can you imagine the Four Kings? Needless to say, I'm not doing this. And you shouldn't either. But if you do decide to go against common sense and do it yourself, let me know in the comments what kind of problems you ran into. Or if you can think of some other ways to improve this build, feel free to let me know about that too. Who knows? Someone might find that one thing that makes this run actually somewhat viable. I'm open to the idea. Also, if you've got any other suggestions for Ye of Little Faith videos, I'm all ears. I've got a few that people have suggested already, but you guys are more creative than me when it comes to making near impossible runs, so have at it. But until then, that's all I've got. Take care of yourselves, be good to one another, and I'll see you all again soon.